I remember it well. I had just finished speaking to a group of about a hundred women about loving your body, and shortly after, a sweet woman came up to me in tears, asking me how she could find the right balance between being obsessed with taking care of her body and making changes and neglecting herself. She told me that she was wearing herself out at the gym trying to be perfect. And the good news is is that her body was changing just like she wanted, but she was so obsessed with making sure that she put in her gym time, she felt like other things in her life were getting neglected. And she felt completely out of balance. I felt for her and I could tangibly feel her frustration and her true desire to love and care for the body that she was in but also how much she wanted to have that balance in other areas of the li- of her life at the same time. So I wanted to ask you, have you ever been there wanting to make a change to your body or physically, emotionally, any of that, but feeling the need to be perfect at it? Or else you'll end up right back where you started or square one if you would. Hey, I'm Elizabeth and I am here to help you become a woman of wellness by healing your relationship with food and loving your body. Today's topic is one I approach with truly the most sensitivity and love that I can have for you because I want you to know that I have been right where you are. And I know that you've either been there in the past or maybe you're there right now. And no matter what degree of frustration you have with your body and figuring out the obsession versus neglect, I want you to know that you're in the right place. And I truly, truly hope that my message today will help you find more hope, more love for your body, and ultimately a way to find a balance that makes you feel your very best. So today, I want to talk about that favorite word of all of ours, balance, right? I have a little story for you. Do you know who the world's biggest perfectionist is? It's me. (laughs) It's true. I want to tell you, I have been known to buy at least about a thousand notebooks, at least, (laughs) with the desire to start journaling. But in order to do it, I have to have the perfect cute notebook, the perfect pencil, and not miss one single day at journaling. I'm almost embarrassed to tell you how many journals have about five pages written in them. And the rest of the pages are blank because when I'm not perfect, I kind of become paralyzed. And so I wanted to ask you, do you ever feel this way specifically with your health? If you want to lose weight or make a change, you have to do it perfectly from the start, right? Or why would you start? What's the point? I want you to know that I have been there so many times in my own journey, specifically also in my health and wellness journey. And I want you to know that perfectionism is crippling. It stops you before you even start. Let me tell you another story. I've also tried to organize a perfect house at least 25,463 times. Yeah, I think that's the right number. (laughs) I have a vision of how all the toys are going to be organized perfectly and how we have the most perfect clean schedule. Nothing's ever dirty. We never have clutter lying around. And guess what happens when I envision that? Every time my house somehow gets even more cluttered and I seriously don't know how it happens. And what ultimately happens is that my anxiety skyrockets and it's so frustrating. The even more frustrating thing is that I know that perfectionism won't get me anywhere. I've been down that road, but somehow I still want to try it, right? But I know that one of the reasons I'm not able to get a handle on it is because I don't really know how to approach that area of my life. So every time I go in with the fallback idea of it's going to be perfect this time, there's that word again, right? (laughs) I want to know how many times have you said that to yourself? This time will be better. The 25,634 times before were just practice rounds, right? (laughs) In fact, my mom always used to tell me that I was really good at learning things the hard way. But then I realized after 30 years of life experience, 30 plus years of life experience, 
that the only way we learn really is the hard way, right? Because we learn when we mess up and we find a way to change it. So we continually make mistakes. We fall off the path. We get back on the path. And we do that with pretty much everything that we want to learn or improve upon or change. When you say the drive for for perfection is so much more common in the health and wellness industry though, how many times have you tried to make a change to your lifestyle? How many diet plans have you started? Diet plans, meal plans, anything that makes you follow a plan. What about exercise programs? How many exercise programs have you bought or signed up for with the best of intentions? And as soon as you're not perfect, you miss a day, you skip something, you move on. First you get frustrated and go on a binge of some sort, maybe like a food binge or let's say a couch potato binge. I don't know, is that a thing? So I wanna know, how do you know where the perfect balance between obsession and neglect of your body is? Isn't that the million dollar question? And truthfully, I wish I had that perfect number for you, like 25,000 something, I can't remember, workouts or 25,000 calories per month. I don't even know. I just made that up. And remember, we don't ever count calories over here. But (laughs) for this purpose, you'll understand. The truth is, your balance is uniquely yours. So I don't have your specific answer. But I do have a really good guide for you to help you find your own balance. Were you worried that I was just going to leave you hanging? I'm not going to give you the perfect plan to follow because remember it's uniquely yours, but I do have a roadmap that I think will really help as you work on finding your own happy balance. When you're wondering how to find a better wellness balance in your life, I want you to ask yourself the following questions. First, what do I want? Second, what is realistic for me? Third, What season of life am I in right now? Fourth, what are my priorities? And lastly, what are my non-negotiables? So first, let's look at the first one here. What do I want? Ask yourself, what does becoming a woman of wellness look like to you? I want you to go deeper than just, say, physical appearance, physical change. What do you feel like as a woman of wellness? What are you able to do, accomplish? How would you describe your relationship with food? How would you describe your relationship with your body? What would movement and exercise look like in your daily life if you were a woman of wellness? So instead of looking for a number on a scale or a dress size, I want you to go a little bit deeper with yourself and write it down. Write it down as a guide for your journey and a reminder of your why. Your why is a very powerful statement that can help you when you're frustrated or feeling unmotivated. So second, the question is, what is realistic for me right now? My husband came home one day and told me that he has a coworker that's a figure competitor. And he was telling me her schedule. And what she does is she wakes up at 3 a.m. every single day to walk on her treadmill for two hours. Then she spends an hour at the gym after that and fills most of her day with meal prepping and eating a diet that allows her body to be essentially competition ready at any point. And I'm not here to say anything against figure competitions. I am not against it at all. And I think setting and reaching goals is great. But for me, that lifestyle sounds absolutely painful. (laughs) And I'm guessing if you're here, right here in this moment, you're probably not wanting to be a body bodybuilder either. If you are, maybe you're not quite in the right spot. I'll just tell you that now. But I want to know, is it realistic for you to hit the gym at 5 a.m. when you're up most of the night wondering if your teenager will actually come home or show up before cur- curfew? You've probably heard that exercise is best in the morning, right? Have you ever heard that before? It's actually a myth, by the way. But let's say you're not a morning person. Do you think an early morning exercise session is going to awaken some inner morning goddess in you (laughs) that's been dying to come out? Maybe, but I'm going to guess probably not. It is true that we often have to make sacrifices to change our lives. That is true and that's good. Sacrifice is great. 
But I want you to make sure those sacrifices are not so hard that you'll want to stop before you even start. So take a minute and write down what is realistic for you right now when you're thinking about your vision. And then with that, here's the third question. What season of life am I in right now? When I have little babies, I do the absolute bare minimum just to keep myself alive. <laughs> that is all I can give when I have young, young babies. And just like the seasons of the weather, we have seasons in life. Sometimes we have seasons to slow down and other times we have seasons to speed up or blossom and grow a little bit faster or more than we normally can. So to spend a minute asking yourself what season you're in and I want you to honor it the best way possible. How can you become a wellness woman of wellness in this season, this specific season that you're in right now? Lastly, ask yourself what your priorities are and make a list of your non-negotiables. What are the most important things that make you feel well? And then do them. Make them non-negotiable. So here's what I want you to do. Make what I like to call maybe a basics list. So what are the basics that you must do each day or each week to help you feel at your best? Those are the basics no matter what season you're in. And then when you're in a season of abundance or blossoming, build onto it. Add to it, make changes, grow, push yourself. When you're in a season of survival, just stick to the basics. You can still be a woman of wellness in every season. And now, if you've been here for more than two seconds, you know that I'm all about taking action and helping you take steps towards the right path. So here's your cue. I want you to go get a notebook, write down these five questions, and fill in your answers right now. What does a woman of wellness look like to you right this minute? Not what it looks like for me or for your neighbor, but for you. And then I want you to share with us in the comments what it looks like for you in this season right now. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being here and I will see you next time.